All right, my third prediction, and this one is a doozy, so you'll probably want to bookmark this one and come back to it. You may even want to share this one with your friends. I think there will be a difficult trig problem on your test. And often with trig, they test the complementary angles rule. So let's start with that. I put it off to the side. Basically, if two angles add to 90 degrees, so if angle A and angle B are complementary, you take the sine of one of the angles and it's going to equal the cosine of the other angle. Let me fix that. And it could be vice versa. I could take the cosine of angle A and then it will equal the sine of angle B. So that's really important to know. Rule of thumb on the SAT, if you see both a sine and a cosine in the same problem, they're probably testing you on the complementary angles rule. Let's read the problem. It says in the given expression, P and Q are constants. Okay, that just means they're numbers such that sine of P equals 0.84 because we know sine is opposite over hypotenuse, I'm actually gonna change this so it makes more sense to me and I'm gonna make it 84 over 100. Substitute in 90 for X. We have one ninth sine. Now 90 minus 90 is zero. So I'll just have sine of P times cosine of Q. We have cosine of 90 minus P times sine of 90 minus Q. Okay, great. So we already know what sine P is. It's 84 over 100. So I'm gonna substitute that in. I've got one ninth times 84 over 100. Great. We know what cosine Q is. It's gonna be times 75 over 100. Right, And then we're going to add to that a cosine of 90 minus P. Now, this is where it gets sneaky, tricky, but this is where the complementary angles rule comes in. 90 minus P is essentially going to be the same value if you take cosine of 90 minus P as sine of P. Because 90 minus P plus P, that adds to 90 degrees. So this angle and this, this angle P, those guys are complementary angles. So cosine of 90 minus P is going to equal the same as sine P. So that's going to be 84 over 100. And then the same logic applies, but the opposite, if we do sine of 90 minus Q, that's going to be the same as cosine of Q. So I'm going to multiply by 75 over 100. All right. Then you just do the math and you solve and you get your answer. Yay. I can totally see why they put it in decimal form instead. That's probably easier to just do it this way on your calculator or in Desmos, right? So that's probably what I would do. I would just pop this right into Desmos. Let's see what it looks like. And then plus 0.84 times 0.75 and you get 0.7. So that's it guys, pretty simple. Comment below and let me know if you thought that maybe I overcomplicated this or you have a simpler way to solve it. I would love to hear.